we are talking about indirect object pronouns, or IOPs, I'll call them throughout the video. Previous knowledge, just know number agreement, whether a word is singular or plural. And why we do these is to indicate to whom or for whom, to or for whom, an action is performed. So if I give my cat a bath, who am I giving a bath to? My cat. Or, you know, if I give the gift to Sally, Sally is the person I'm giving the gift to. So to whom? To Sally. Our indirect object pronouns are me, te, le, nos, os, and les. Here are some examples to kind of give you an idea about when we would use an indirect object pronoun. So we're going to identify in English first and then write them in Spanish. All right, so we're going to be using purple for the indirect object pronouns. All right, I bought a CD for my friend. Now, I bought a CD for whom? For my friend. So, for my friend is our, in, is our indirect object pronoun. The doctor prescribed it, or the medicine, to her. Who did the doctor prescribe the medicine to? To whom? To her. That's our indirect. My arm hurts. Okay, so the arm hurts who? It hurts me, my arm. She likes strawberries and oranges. So like is Gustar, remember this is to please. So the strawberries and oranges are pleasing who? They are pleasing to her, she or her. Now we're gonna write these in Spanish since we know what the indirect objects are. All right, I bought yo compré um, un disco compacto. And then who did I buy it for? For my friend, him or her. So that would be a lay, lay. And if I wanna be a little more specific too, I can say um, para mi amigo. But I don't have to write that part, so I could say that. All right, the doctor prescribed it to her. So the doctor, el medico, el medico, he prescribed it to her. So, lo receto, recetar is to prescribe. He prescribed it and then to her, lay. Now, right here, a lay could apply to a him or a her. So at the end of the sentence, I'm gonna add a, ella. Now you'll see in these examples that remember, this pronoun, like the others, goes before the main verb. So I bought it for him or her, the doctor prescribed it to her. And if you do get a double pronoun like this, the indirect goes before the direct. Who, then what? Number three, my arm hurts. Technically it will translate as my arm hurts me. So who does it hurt? Me, which would be me. My arm, or it hurts. So duele, this is a stem changer. And then my arm, or the arm, el brazo. Remember, because it's an arm, you're not gonna say mi brazo. You don't use the possessive, you're gonna use the adjective, or the, the definite article, excuse me, el brazo. El brazo, it's an R. That's B-R-A-Z-O, brazo. And the last one, she likes strawberries and oranges. So she is going to be lay. Now again, I'm going to clarify at the beginning of the sentence. Who likes it? She does. So a ella le gustan, because it's more than one thing that's pleasing to her. Strawberries, fresas, and oranges, naranja. Now if the sentence said she likes to eat those things, remember all the verbs in the world, it's still gonna be gusta. But since it's likes and then there are specific items, le gustan. So basically if you see le or lace, it's generally a good idea to clarify specifically who it is. Some things to note. Um, indirect object pronoun will, it goes before the main verb. Like when we said, le compre, 
bought it for him. The lay will go before the main verb. If the main verb is followed by an infinitive or a participle, just like with the other pronouns, it can either stay before the main verb like usual, or you can attach it to the end of the infinitive verb. You can use a usted, a el, or a ella with lay and lace to show to whom the pronoun refers. So when we went over the previous examples, rewind and go back to that slide if you need to see that again. They're used with verbs like gustar, encantar, and doler. It agrees, remember, it agrees with the person, the pronoun agrees with the person. So if I like, it's going to be me gusta. But the verb doesn't agree with the person, it agrees with what is being liked, what hurts, what is boring, what they love. Okay? And here are a couple examples. So el médico le dio una inyección a ella. So the doctor gave an injection to whom? To her. So we put le before the main verb. Le dio. Mi amigo va a darles regalos a sus padres. So my friend is going to give the gifts to his parents. So who is he giving them to? To them. That's why lace is right there. And you could either put the lace right here, lace va a dar, or I wanted to remind you, you can take it and put it on the infinitive. So where was that? Where was that? Verb is followed by an infinitive. You can attach it to the end of the infinitive. Right there, dar lace. An infinitive, recall, is a verb that has not been conjugated. It's left alone. And the last one, a ti te encanta la musica latina. No? So it's saying, you like... Latin music, right? Or no? So who is it to? You, a ti, and then te and canta because it's you that is liking the music or the music is pleasing to you. Take a moment, please pause the video to identify and then replace the indirect object pronouns in the following sentences. Okay, let's go through these together and see if you need to make any corrections. I cook you chicken. Well, who am I cooking the chicken for? I'm cooking it for whom? For you. So, I cook is yo cocino. Chicken is el pollo. And I'm cooking it for you, so te cocino. Technically, you don't really need this yo because it cocino lets you know who's cooking. So you could just say te cocino if you wanted to as an option. Next one, the doctor prescribes medicine to whom? To us. So the doctor, el médico. Um, prescribe, receta, he prescribes. Medicine, medicina. To whom? To us. That indirect object pronoun is going to be nos. Remember, it always goes before the main verb. My arm hurts, or the arm, it hurts. Who? It hurts me. So the may is going to go before the verb. Dolaire is a stem changer. Remember, it's the arm, or it hurts. So, oh, that should be purple. May. And then duele, and then el brazo, the arm. I give a gift to them. Who am I giving the gift to? To them. So I give is yo doy. What am I giving? A gift, un regalo. Regalo. To them is going to be lace. Lace doy. Now, if I were you, again, I would indicate who is receiving that gift. So to them would be a ellos. You could also rewrite this so un regalo becomes a lo. Remember, the indirect goes before the direct. So that would be, if you wanted to write it this way, you don't have to. So let's see. Yo les lo doy. You do not have to write it this way if you want to, but if you would like to challenge yourself, that is how you would do so. Last one, she likes to run to eat 
and to dance. To like to do something is gustar. She likes, so these things are pleasing to who? To her. Her or she, that's going to be le. Now remember, le doesn't tell us whether it's he, she, or you formal. So in front of that, I'm going to add a, ella. Then le, our verb is gustar. Remember that when these are action words, gusta is never going to be plural if it's followed only by verbs. If it were followed by things like items, or that she, you know, that would be a, that would be plural gustan. But since these are actions, it stays singular. Gusta to run, correr, to eat, comer, and e bailar to dance. Remember, also after verbs like gustar, doler, and cantar, querer, all of the verbs that follow it stay in infinitive. To eat, comer, okay? Nothing changes. 